All right, welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Heroclix. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is part two. Part two of the uh, Joker's Wild uh, set uh, review. Uh, so if you haven't listened to part one, please do go listen to part one first because there's a lot of stuff that I set up in part one for part two so it's just you know makes sense to listen to things in the chronological order all right so let's get started all right so we're going to go and look at uh a another figure that i feel is actually you know not that bad uh in this set and uh and, and i know some of you might say like what why why are this figure uh and it is the flash Jay Garrick, uh, 35 points, all, all-star squadron, Keystone City, Justice Society, past speedster and scientist keyword. Now, you might ask yourself, you know, he has a JSA team ability, he has a nice 18 defense, nothing to, you know, really to write home about. Dark Logos, why, oh why, um, is he worth our time looking at? And, and the main reason is this. If you find a way to do one or two things to him for 35 points, he's really good for a third-tier attacker. Um, number one, if you're able to ha- like have one perplex to give him three damage. Because he already has an 11 attack, so that's great. Uh, or number two, give him precision strike. <clears throat> if your team can do one of those two things, he becomes really strong. He's really hard to tie down, and in all honesty... Uh, at his point value, if you're also able to give him Force Blast. Now, that last bit, most of you all, like, scratched your head, wonder what type of dark magic am I summoning. Uh, but bear with me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down. I'm going to break it down like a Kung Fu chop, you know, on some uh, old dusty boards. Okay. First off, Force Blast just goes off during an attack. Uh, You can use Force Blast, you know, just to roll the D6, say, hey, man, you get knocked back that far. But Force Blast resolves on a melee attack or on a ranged attack. You can use it on either. So if you're able to find a way in the future, uh, time travelers, to give Jay Garrett Force Blast, he's a 12 movement. And if you're also able to up his damage, it would be a 3 damage, pretty much punch that would knock somebody into a wall. Uh, or off a building and then all of a sudden the amount of damage that he does is exponentially higher and and I know most people don't see it that way um, because everyone's just used to looking at flat numbers and not looking at combos but at a 12 movement in a 11 attack and 2 damage he's not going to do much but at 35 points other elements that you can introduce to your team if you give it to Jay Garrick He just comes back around and says, oh, cool, I can do this now, and then does it. And then you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. So he's he's five clicks deep, which means that your opponent has to at least put in two attacks on average to kill him. And and that's really good. You know, it's nothing to sneeze at. Again, it's not like, oh, my gosh, you know, he's tanking all the damage. But it, it is something to keep in mind that... <clears throat> hey, he's able to take some hits. He's able to, you know, come back and and bring in, you know, your opponent to invest way too much energy on two little points. All right. So I really like that. Now, of course, if you're just like, man, I need a, a cheap way of getting an 18 defense on my wild card, then yeah, okay, cool. JSA, there you go, buddy. And, uh,. <sighs> The trait, um, I I really don't like it, but whatever. It's it's just those simpler time traits are really not that good. Gosh, gosh, it sucks so bad. All right, so next up is Looker. Now Looker, I feel, is not the second coming of Brother Voodoo. But uh, Looker is definitely a character, I think, if you don't respect this character, you're an idiot. 
And I, and I really do mean that. You're an idiot. And here's why. First off, outsiders. 45 points. That's a low investment. Really, really low investment. All right. Eight range. Oh, my gosh. So many other game effects that you can tie, you know, with her, including Envy. So now it's like, hey, I can steal your attack plus perplex you if you had a relic or resource. No, I think, sorry, that's greed. Envy takes your attack. Sorry, that's greed that perplexes you if you have a relic or resource. All right, so now you're, you're able to do cool stuff at 8 range because remember, 8 range is really uncommon. All right, now here comes the goodness, uh, her special power, uh, because she flies. Uh, so she's also a taxi. Uh, Looker can use mind control. When she does, the hit character modifies its attack value by plus one this turn, even if it has been targeted by the Outsider's team ability. So you are able to Outsider's them to lower down their base stats, then mind control them, mind you, possibly taking one feedback, and then coming back around and saying like, hey, yeah, I modify your attack by plus one before I whack you with your own guy and stop hitting yourself. So I have a character that can taxi for me, I have a character that can outsiders for me, I have a character that can mind control for me, and she has a 17 defense energy shield deflection. So it's really annoying for you to go after her, and if you do go after her, whoop de dink a doo you score 45 points. Yeah, so like, respect her. Res respect her. This is, this, I think it lookers a she. But yeah, like definitely this this is a character to look out for. Not good for theme teams because you only have two keywords, Gotham City and Outsiders. But eight range and I know some probably people will say like dark logos have to stealth and you know, you talk about that, you know, League of Assassins ATA, you know, I'm packing that too, blah 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 blah. And I mean fair. That's the whole point why I hype those things, okay? But still, for everything else the crane came in and hit your team, you know, and then you're just like outsiders, you crane. Now you're this defense, mind control you. Now your attack is this. Oh, you pick those powers. Now go kill your Justin or kill your Baxter. Thank you very much, crane. Or crane came over and killed Looker, wasted an attack because the main attacker is just going to come back and kill him. what I'm saying. Anyway, so uh, let's let's keep on going. Um, on to the next character. Alright, our next character up is Sandman. Now you might have noticed, like, hey, I skipped a bunch of figures. And it's like, yeah, because most of those figures suck. And uh, I know some of you might be saying, like, hey, man, Talon is great, dog. He's, he's great. Or El Diablo, he's the truth. And I'm like, nah. Nah. Now, Sandman. Now, you might be saying, like, why Sandman? Well, simply put, Quinjet teams, homie, Quinjet teams. Uh, <clears throat> paying 30 points to summon in uh, Sandman on a Sandman ID card uh, is really good. Uh, not only that, is uh, you can uh, use the uh, Sleep Gun. Sleep Gun says when Sandman hits with an attack, after actions resolve, he may counter a power on the target until that character clears action tokens. Which... It's pretty good. I mean, it's not it's it's not like you're you're doing rocket science here. This is mainly just to you know boost up your role when summoning you know stuff in with the Quinjet. That's it. I mean, yeah, that that's it. So uh, that's why we're looking at them. Um, we're gonna keep on moving on. Now I'm gonna say this: I like the Spectre as a hyper taxi, twelve movement. You know, being able to carry JSA team ability, 8 range, which means absolutely bupkis when you're talking about 9 attack and, and 2 damage. It means absolutely nothing. Okay? You're, there's no way for you to directly control that you're going to get on that last click, so you're 11-3 and a 19 defense. Sorry, you, that's, that's not happening. Uh, so, overall, I just like this as a figure. Um, if you're just using him as a taxi, you find another way of getting him out with Perplexer Prob. He's magically delicious. But if you can't do any of that, just keep on rolling. There's there's better figures. Um, but he's he's a decent taxi. That's about it. All right. Uh, let's keep on looking. 
Uh, Dr. Fate is nice again. Why? ID card. ID card, ID card, ID card. Hold on, wait. Is Dr. Fate ID card? I thought he was. And I think he was an ID card from this year. Um, now note, people, I didn't get all the ID cards this year from Origins. Yeah, he is an ID card. Uh, opposing characters can't use Perplex, but yeah, I, I thought so. Like, yeah, he's an ID card. So, again, same thing, Quinjet goodness. Um, but also, uh, he has a special power that just says, at the beginning of your turn, choose Empower or Enhancement. Dr. Fate can use the chosen power this turn. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility, and that's about it. Um, you know, hey, we got we got Enhancement over here. You know, cool. All right, now here's Lady Shiva. I talked about her previously. And let's let's break her down, her values and her disadvantages. Uh, but first off, she has Batman enemy team ability, League of Assassins, uh, keyword assassin and martial artist. So yay for that. Uh, then she has the this is how I deal with the bat. Also modify characters attack values by plus one if it's a close combat attack, if they're using the uh, uh, Batman enemy team ability. OK, if they're using her uh, attack value, which means functionally uh, she can raise up an opponent, a friendly character's attack uh, by one for a melee attack, making it a 13. That is really good. That is really, 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 really good. OK, uh, then you go on and you have the first one was just to get you off balance. Lady Shiva can use flurry and precision strike. Um, so that's nice. Uh, she does require a taxi, though, to get in position because she does not have charge. Uh, when she uses Flurry, if the second attack is against the same target, you may keep the result of one of the dice from the first attack. And if you do, the second attack roll cannot be re-rolled. So pretty much what you can do is say, like, hey, I hit my first attack. Guess what, homie? Um, I'm making it so that you cannot prop my second attack because the attack roll cannot be re-rolled. And that is a huge thing, considering that she has a 12 attack up front and 11, o'clock, 11 attack on click two. All right. Uh, then you have uh, I am the ultimate test. Lady Shiva can use combat reflexes. Adjacent opposing characters can't have their combat values increase when making close attacks. So she's pretty much saying, hey, man, if you're going to try to hit me, you're going to have to deal with my 19 with your base stats, which isn't bad. Now, like I said, what we're mainly looking at is her being used with a wild card as a means of bumping attack and then sort of be being used as a tr tertiary attacker doing whatever she can. Um, downsides of Lady Shiva, no movement attack, plus size of Lady, Lady Shiva, really good attack values, okay uh, damage output, the ability with exploit up front to get through uh, damage reducers is key. Uh, is this piece going to rock the meta? I wish the answer was yes. I wish it was going to be like, yeah, this is going to be, you know, huge national scene. Everybody's going to be, you know, buying Lady Shiva's and, you know, she's going to be the poster girl for hero clicks. That's not the case. You, even though League of Assassins is good and you can try to force your opponent to come in and do an attack, a melee attack problem still comes in is that uh, you you need an ability to get in there. Now you can't come back and say, but hey Dark Logos, what would happen if I put a sin on her and she has sidestep? Well, that helps, but again, if I'm mindful that you have sidestep, then I'm constantly going to be three squares away from you. Constantly. Alright, so there there is some there, there are some problems here. Uh, so is this the best thing that can happen to Batman enemy? Yes, because there hasn't really been a good 12 attack in a long time, and she's economical. Um, but again, this is not the savior that they were looking for. Or, uh, you know, uh, Antichrist. There we go. Antichrist, because they're villains. Uh, but still, I, I know I, I, I had to talk about her, because she, she's good stuff. She's good stuff, and everybody's going to be like, yeah! Lady Shiva, Lady Shiva. And yeah. All right. Um here we go. This next this next one I actually like it. 
uh, because of the potential that it has for being useful in other situations, uh, not just uh, Batman enemy. And that's Deadshot. Uh, he has approved targeting, ignores characters. He has a nine range. Uh, I really, really wish he did have ignore elevated or ignore hindering. Um, one of those two, but yeah, okay, whatever. Take whatever you can get. Uh, 11 attack, range combat expert, stealth up front. Then you can pay an extra five points. And it says when building your force, a theme team may include Deadshot and still be a theme team if your force includes a character with a point value greater than Deadshot. Uh, uh, sorry, greater than uh, sorry, greater than, than 80, I guess. Then I don't know if they wrote this right. Include a character with a point value greater than 80. Sorry. Uh, if your force doesn't have a character with a point value greater than 80, modify Deadshot's combat values by minus one. Uh, so he allows you to, you know, just be on a team and be useful if if you don't want to, you know, you don't want to break theme for whatever reason. And I, I feel that this guy can actually be really useful if you can find, uh, you know, probably an 85 point figure uh, or higher. Because I don't think there's like any 81 point figures in the game total existing of all time. Because that's a really weird number. Uh, 79, I know there was like a 79, but an 81, I don't really think there ever was an 81. And I know that if I go over and I go to unit section, and let's see here. Let me just go ahead, put in point cost value equal to 81 probably going to find like what oh wow okay never mind uh wolverine and the x-men havoc 81 points uh werewolf by night 81 points giant size x-men emma frost 81 points hammer of thor daredevil 81 points just, uh, yeah, okay, I was wrong. Now I'm Zantu from Just League Training War, 81 points. Hey, man, you can't, you can't, can't always have the psychic powers when it comes to the hero clicks, you know what I mean? So, anyway, uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, anyway, uh, so I, I like him. Nine range, again, that's really good. That's, that's really good. Uh, the keywords of Gotham City, Suicide Squad, and Assassin. That's good too. Batman enemy, helping out your Batman enemy guys, getting an 11 attack. Not something crazy like a 12 from Lady Shiva, but still an 11 is really good. Suicide Squad is trying to help him stay in the fight just a little, little bit longer, but you know, hey, that's that's all you got. All right, uh, I I see him with ants. Not going to. I'm not. I'm not lying. Like him with ants is dumb because he could just shoot through ants. So, you know, that's my that's my uh thought. All right. Uh I'm going to I'm going to bring up Grace just real quick because she can do some a, a little bit, you know, kooky stuff. She's 125 points. She has outsiders TA. She has a trait that says, "I'll take the big guy." Uh, after a move action, Grace is given uh, resolve. Uh, she may make a close combat attack, targeting a higher, uh, targeting an adjacent higher point opposing character. So, uh, pretty much, you could just say she has a ten move charge to hit the most uh, expensive character or uh, a higher point character than she is uh, on the map. Now that is okay, uh, but it's it's something that I feel like you really have to time out like really well uh and, and you know she's picking up an ultra heavy to do seven damage so you have to expect that so she's she's not bad again change the world you know one click at a time i don't think so but not bad all right and i just had like 30 cards just fall on the ground yay hero clicks all right uh let's let's move on to the next figure and that is Mr. Freeze now Mr. Freeze is okay uh, he has a, a trait try not to shatter my frozen friends boys when Mr. Freeze hits with a ranged combat attack 
Give each hit character an action uh, token, and after actions resolve, attach a ice wall marker to one hit character unless it is attached to another character. So you can't just bounce it around once you use it. Okay. All right. Uh, then we're going to go to the ice wall marker. As long as the ice wall marker is attached, that character can't be moved or placed and modifies its defense values by minus two. Remove it at the end of that character's turn and deal that character one penetrating damage or give any adjacent character a power action uh, to remove the ice wall. So it doesn't say opposing either. So um, friendlies can do it, which I, I mean, I can see why um, he would do that, but eh. Uh, then you have uh, special power back to refrigeration. Mr. Freeze can use toughness. Um, at the beginning of your turn, heal Mr. Freeze uh, a number of clicks equal to three minus the number of adjacent opposing characters. So he could just be like, bloop, 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 bloop. Heal three. Which can be really strong because if you get him on the first click of that, he's going to go to Psychic Blast and 11 attack, 3 damage, toughness. So that's really useful. Uh, frozen Aura. Adjacent opposing characters modify their attack and damage values by minus 1. Uh, that's something I... He, he, gives, he gives himself a little bit of that extra edge in... in and I, I don't mind that. And the fact that combat reflexes on him goes a long way from, uh, you know, utilizing Pandora's box. Um, and then even if you want to say sloth, uh, yeah, you could even say sloth because uh, his back to refrigeration uh, does not trigger as a free action. So if you just like, okay, back to refrigeration, click, 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 click. And I didn't do anything else. All right, sloth heal, click, sidestep, boom. You know, you're on click one. So I, I really like it. I think there's some combos to be, be made with him. Uh, is he like the, the again, the super, you know, savior for Batman enemy? No. But he is uh, another 11 attack that Batman enemy can get, which is huge because they really don't have a lot of higher attackers. Next up, man, freaking Penguin is boss. Penguin is boss. So he has a Batman enemy. He is 40 points. And then he has this is how I deal with the bat, which you'll never use. Um, and, well, I take that back. You might use it because after the action resolves, you may give the Robo Penguin a move action as a free action. So, anyway, he says he has my own deadly rookery. Give Penguin a power action to place an adjacent a Robo Penguin bystander of your choice, as described on the card. Uh, give the Penguin a power action to give each Robo Penguin a move action as a free action. Now, again, this can really be useful if you have a bunch of wild cards with a lower attack than Penguin and copying Penguin's attack so that you can just move these freaking bombs like just all over the map for free okay so like i'm saying just just give me a moment i'm trying to set this up all right my best weapon to date the penguin begins the game with a robo penguin attached when placing a robo penguin bystander on the map you may remove the robo penguin from his base and use it to represent the bystander the bystander modifies his combat values by plus one uh and when it's KO, reattach the Robo Penguin uh, to the Penguin base. Now, there's there's different Robo Penguins, uh, and this is the issue. Um, the way it looks is that you can only have one Robo Penguin out at a time, uh, just because uh, you're you're using the 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 attachment from the sculpt. So that's where my only little point of concern is like, can I like treat the robo penguins like ants or do I treat the robo penguins more something along the lines of like Rick Jones pogs. So anyway, uh, so you have a sidestep pulse wave with nine attack four movement, toughness and one damage and tiny. I um, mean, all the, actually all the robo penguins are tiny. Then you have charge 10 attack, 
combat reflex is one damage and then you have uh running shot with five range uh four movement 10 attack psychic blast and one damage now um all in all these seem to be like a little bit of a copy from the um devil dinosaur pogs uh and and again it's 40 points not 50 points or 60 points and so getting one pog out there is not bad or one little character out there is not bad uh and the penguin's dial is it's all right it's 40 points it's all right it's got an 18 defend so that's that's that has some utility but other than that you know it's not the best of the best dials but this little little pocket generating little bomb penguins those are pretty cool those are pretty cool so i like that all right uh let's keep on going um oh, man i i want to like riddler but i think he is too complicated for most players to use and i i don't I don't like his utility overall, so I'm just I'm just going to be honest. All right, uh, let's go on to Green Lantern, Alan Scott. Uh, he has JSA keyword. He is 35.7 range. A little sad, a little sad on that. Um, but at the same time, he's a flyer within Dom, so he's a really really nice taxi. Not the best taxi, just a nice taxi. Uh, he has that whole simpler time trait which is completely bunk. Uh, then we have Green Lantern's Light. Once per turn, Green Lantern can use Barrier. He can use it as a free action, but only to place one marker. Uh, when he uses Barrier, he may substitute one Barrier that he would place with the Light Wall marker and place it in a character square within range, placing it one side along an edge. This marker acts as a wall, if you place the light wall marker, uh, it's removed uh, at the start of your next turn. So, cool. All right. Uh, I'm able to make blocking terrain. Or wall. Fine by me. You know, uh, if it's it's a free action, it allows you to, you know sort of creep along uh add some you know level added some levels of security uh to your your team and and that's cool uh again is this the best thing that you can get out the set no is it functional yes is it useful y you could probably think of how to use it uh 35 points it's cheap utility with a 10 attack 3 damage and that part you really can't like look down on uh, Pandora's box, giving it combat reflexes and sidestep will make it a lot more useful. I mean, like that's, that's the best I could tell you. Oh man, here comes the thunder. Yep. Johnny thunder. That is, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's my transition and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Johnny thunder. Also, if people don't know Johnny thunder was a Mormon. Uh, that is his, uh, part of his character background. Um, he's a Mormon. Uh, I was looking that up, uh, I found, uh, what was it, like, this, uh, this page that was, like, talking about, like, the religions of, uh, all these different characters in the, in comic books, and so, I just stumbled upon, on, on, well, I stumbled upon, uh, Johnny Thunder one day, so, all right, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at this, all right, so, uh, we have, uh, my wish is G. How do I say it? Uh, at the beginning of your turn, roll a D6 that can't be re-rolled. One, modify Johnny uh, Thunder's combat values by minus one. So that sucks. Uh, two through five, Johnny Thunder can use a standard power of your choice, which is awesome, baller sauce. And number six, modify Johnny, Johnny Thunder's values by plus one, and Johnny Thunder can use a standard power of your choice, which is the cherry on top of baller sauce. Uh, so, and it says any results last until your next turn. Now, a lot of people might say, hey, Dark Logos, 
what point value would you play Johnny Thunder at? And I would say either point value works. And here's why. First, we look at the higher point value. We have the special power, uh, the most powerful JSA member, <clears throat> if only he'd realize it. Uh, Johnny Thunder can use perplex and probability control, but both only to target opposing characters. That's really, really useful. Add that on top of the fact that you can pick any standard power. Uh, so now I have perplex outwit and prob. That is really, really good. And I'm invincible up front. Or I can be hypersonic speed sidestep, you know, outwit. And I mean, you know, I mean, like that is great. Or increase my stats by plus one, and I can just charge or and and have an eleven attack and four damage if I roll a six and nineteen defense. Like there's a lot of good stuff that you can do on the top dial. Uh, even going so far to say, hey man, put an entity on him. And at 150, he can hang with some of the best figures in the game. I mean, he just like, oh, I pick Pulse Wave. Sidestep, Pulse Wave, boom. Okay. So, 75 points, he just starts with standard prop. He still has his roll thing where he can pick a power. And he still has a chance of increasing his stats by plus one. Yes, he's three clicks, but you just push to click two if you really don't, you know, you want to be more offensive and not like the 75 point prob, then all of a sudden you have a 12 attack, three damage. And if you do roll a two through six, you're able to pick charge, flurry, hypersonic speed, super strength. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, imperv, invincible, super senses, any number of, of, of great options to make Johnny Thunder stupid strong and just piss off your opponent. I'm, I'm just being honest. When you're, you're a 12 attack, 3 damage, and then you're upping your stats all by 1, now I'm a 12 attack, 4 damage with an 8 movement and an 18 defense and combat reflexes. I have every incentive to charge you, hypersonic speed, and base you. Like, every incentive. Okay? And I'm 13 attack. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. All right. And he's a six range two target. So I, at the other end, I can also be like, yo, energy explosion, fool. There's so much good stuff here. There's, and, and I, and I, here's what I'm, I'm going to tell you. Pick up a Johnny Thunder. Just, just pick him up. Save your money for what I'm going to talk about next, but pick up a Johnny Thunder. Figure out how you're going to, you know, do the little magic doobly-doos, okay, and, and roll with it. And here is why I'm saying that. Because the moment everybody figures out how strong Johnny Thunder can be, his value is going to go up. So just get yours ahead of time. People want to look at him and they're like, your stats suck balls, you know, and, and say all the other stuff that they're going to say. But, but look at it like this. He has a consistent three damage across the board. Across the board. Okay. He starts with mediocre attacks. Fine. Fine. His last two clicks are his best clicks of, of uh, attack. Fine. I'll give you that. Purely give you that. But with, uh, when it comes to defense, JSA on average is an 18. If you go to Spectre, he can push and get to a 19 if you really want to do that. Okay. There's there's things that you can go back with the JSA simpler time crap. Fine. This is a good top tier A minus piece that in local games will get over on a majority of people. Okay, can he work for Rock? Yes. On the Super Q level, yes. On a regional level, questionable. But yeah, this is good. Pass theme team, mystical theme team, soldier theme team, JSA theme team. All of those are workable theme teams with Johnny Thunder. All right, so um, let's we're done with that. Let's talk about the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, the, the future of Heroclix. 
um, the, the, the star of my Black History Month team next year, uh, Jakeem Thunder. I'm, I'm going to get him. Uh, just you can bank on that. I'm, I'm going to get him. Uh, now, here's, here's the thing. Some people will say, Edward, why are you saying to get Johnny Thunder if Jakeem, is, Jakeem Thunder is better? Like, all around, we can just see Jakeem Thunder is better. Why are you telling me about Johnny Thunder and how he's awesome and blah, 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 yakety smackety, this, that, and the other. Okay. So, let's let's look at it. Johnny Thunder does not have to front your team. And he can be a really great utility, taxi, uh, support. Uh, he can do tons of different things that are great for your team. Okay. He, you have a one in six chance to shoot yourself in the foot. That's acceptable odds, all right? Jakeem Thunder, on the other hand, you have to know from jump what your options are and how you're doing it. You also have to invest. And I'm not going to lie when I tell you this. You have to invest in an entity. You are. You're either running Brainiac or you're running Eclipso for whatever reasons, okay? But you're more than likely going to be running Brainiac over Eclipso. Okay? Now, you might be saying, like, why why all this? Let's look at this trait. You know what I'm thinking, Johnny. At the beginning of, and, and, and it should be, you know what I'm thinking, Jakeem. But, I don't know, is the, is, is the genie named Johnny? I I'm I wonder or is it is or is the um or is the genie named Thunder? I don't know. Anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, at the beginning of your turn, uh, choose two standard powers, two, but only one of those powers may be a defense power. Okay, that's fine. Hypersonic speed, that's fine. Outwit, perplex, or pulse wave. Jakeem Thunder can use the chosen powers until your next turn. So what, what, what is WizKids trying to stop you from doing? They're trying to stop you from saying, like, hey, I have impervious, invincible super senses and hypersonic speed, or impervious super senses, super senses and pulse wave, or I have outwit perplex or prob perplex. Okay. Well, actually, you could still do prob perplex or prob outwit, uh, but uh, they don't want you to have pulse wave perplex or something like that. That's fully fine. Fully fine. Okay. And this is why you need the entity. Okay. Uh, because there's a couple of things that makes Jakeem Thunder stupider than Super Scroll. Now, yes, you can say, but Super Scroll had the ability, so when he would die, he would come back. Yes, but Super Scroll also had the ability to, like, kill himself. All right. Uh, and this is, this is why I'm saying, like, Jakeem Thunder legit gotta look out for this guy alright so first combo that comes to my mind is hypersonic speed and super strength picking up an ultra heavy to do 7 damage or hypersonic speed precision strike to get through your basic damage okay I have prob so I'm gonna land right there so let's just say for example I'm, I got brainiac right in front of me I go with brainiac okay so, I already have sidestep. I can pick impervious off of Brainiac. So, I just go ahead and ignore that part about defensive power. All right. I can pick that off of Brainiac. Or, if I want to take a more supportish role, let's just say I pick Outwit. Okay. So, I pick Outwit. All right. Off of Brainiac. Then, I decide, all right, well, I can get rid of their damage uh, power. So, I really don't need to pick Pulse Wave. Running Shot would be useful. Um, so let me just use running shot. Okay. So I have running shot and then you're going to say like, Hey, I'm at a pretty good distance. Um, then my second power could be, uh, impervious. Okay. So what is, what's happened is I've picked running shot and impervious. So I haven't violated the terms of the trait. Okay. I've picked outwit from my entity. Okay, so now I'm at a pretty good distance. I'm going to outwit. 
I'm going to get rid of their damage reduction. And I'm just going to run a shot to wherever it's safe or wherever it gives me the best option with two targets. Boom. And I'm going to light them up. Okay. Let's sort of take that scenario again. Because I have two targets, I can still pick running shot and energy explosion. And it does not violate the terms of you know what I'm thinking, Johnny. Now, here's the other cool thing. I could also say I'm going to pick running shot in super senses. Okay. Running shot in super senses, and I'm going to pick impervious off of my entity. So now I'm impervious in super senses. Okay. So I have two outs. Uh, I could also say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to pick impervious from my entity. I'm going to pick shape change, and then I'm going to pick uh, super senses. So now I have three outs if I really want to be, you know, super defensive and my opponent doesn't have pulse wave. Do you, st I mean, like, do, do you see what's going on? Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Okay. Uh, I, I couldn't get it where I, where I wanted to. My, my nose is clogged, so I'm sorry. Um, Dwayne Johnson, if you're listening, I'm, I'm a big fan. Been so since I was a kid. Um, you're, you're the number one wrestler in my heart. You, you, you beat out Hulk Hogan. And that was a hard thing to do. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, you, you can see right there. Like, I got sidestep up front. Sidestep, running shot, boom. Hypersonic speed, running shot. I mean, hypersonic speed, sidestep, boom. You know, like, there, there's, too many, there's too much jank. You know, there's there's too much jank. And then if I want to do round table on top of that, if I want to do Pandora's box on top of that, you know, it's it's too much jank that just makes him dumb. Like legit wise, and I do mean this, he can take on figures that are fifty to seventy points higher than him. You know, like like if you just set him up right. So Jakeem Thunder by him. Like, buy him. I know this is going to be like, oh my gosh, he's an $80 piece. Like, save your pennies, man. Um, or wait until, you know, the set starts to lose some steam. Or freaking snipe some Ebays. Like, but yeah. Like, get him. Get get Jakeem Thunder. Worth every penny because he's about to, to rule the meta. Uh, and, it, and, it, and here's, and even add in a little bit more, is that, oh dog, check this out. If I team him up, with that oh so you know annoying the flash now i just use the flash's defense and now i have a super senses on a sixth what you gonna do I, I'm, I'm just i'm just telling you people this is it's beyond annoying all right uh i know people like geoforce geoforce is nothing jakeem thunder owns geoforce he, he sucks now, I know some folks will then say, like, you got the outsiders and stuff. stuff. I could pick better stuff. I could pick better stuff to get around your outsiders. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Man Bat, sorry for you. If you pull that, that's a trash, super rare. Uh, Plastic Man, on, only playing for the ID, man. Uh, only playing for the ID. Bang! This is the fun. This This is the fun right here. Okay, uh, as much as I would say, like, get an entity on him and put Parallax on him or something like that, uh, I mean, not Parallax, uh, Proteus, it would just be more amusing than anything else if you put Proteus on him. Uh, Proteus and Sloth, like, that combo would be actually pretty good. Yeah, Proteus and Sloth, uh, yeah, I like that. Proteus and Sloth. Uh, so anyway, here we go. Bane is 11 clicks deep. Uh, how This is how I deal with the bat. You know, once per turn for all characters with this trait. If a character uses the Batman enemy team build, you replace its attack value with Bane's. Also modify that character's attack value by plus one if it's a close attack. So you're right back there with Lady Shiva. So you, you might as well have Lady Shiva on board. Okay, so automatically Lady Shiva, Bane super you know super villain date okay then you have venom pump uh give bane a free action and place one or two venom tokens on his card increase bane's attack and damage value uh and reduce damage dealt to him by the number of venom tokens 
on his card. At the beginning of your turn, remove all Venom tokens from his card and deal him unavoidable damage equal to the number of Venom tokens. So, yeah, you could choose not to Venom steroid pump him up, and that's fine. But do understand that you won't have any damage reduction. Now, you could go light and say, hey, man, um, I'm going to just pick one. And then you can up, you know, his attack and damage values. Uh, yeah, increases attack and damage values, uh, you know, up by one. So I'll make him like an 11-4. Or you can go hard in the paint, up, you know, up front and be like, yo, man, 12-5 up in this piece. You know, and if you have any good, you know, means of deployment, there you go. Now, some of you might say, hey, Dark Logos, this doesn't seem too smart. And this is where I say, but Proteus might actually be worth it. So, two Venom Pump tokens. Okay, you're going to take two damage. So screw it. Okay, two Venom Pump tokens and Proteus plus Sloth. Okay, so you're going to sidestep. Uh, then you're going to charge. Um, so you're going to have a charge value of seven. Okay, and now some of you might be saying, like, hold up, wait, how's that happening? Uh, we got a four, then a plus one sorry uh yeah sorry we have four and then we have a side step so it's going to give us two more and then we're going to have a plus one from proteus from our modifier so it's going to turn out to seven so we can cover seven squares we sidestep then we charge okay boom all right now if we have our calculator uh lady shiva combo and we can get that to magically work we're starting off with a 12 attack going up to a 14 attack and if we do some shenanigans, replacing, since we're replacing with Lady Shiva's attack, we're actually modifying the attack again by plus one. Uh, thus, really sort of capping it out at 15 for four damage. Yeah. So again, let's, let's go back. We got a replacement value of 12. Then we're getting Proteus for giving us up to 13. Okay. And then we have Lady Shiva getting up to 14 and a Venom Pump that's getting us up to 15, even though the Venom Pump is sort of, you know, really not needed, you know, or whatever. Uh, so we're 15 attack. And if it wasn't for a rule of three, we'd be at 16. And yeah, there you go. So uh, Bane can be dumb. Uh, you know, the amount of feedback, crappy damage stuff that could happen to him in one turn could go south really really bad not gonna lie or um, you can play him very safe never venom pump him and find a way of giving him damage reduction and if you do that congratulations to you you have broken this figure but other than that I say Proteus bring it on the Proteus uh, I like Clayface because it more encourages this like close combat encounter, um, but yeah, you know, take it or leave it. Oh, man, all right. These two jokers, I'm just going to tell you flat out, get them. Uh, just flat out, get them. There's there's no reason for me to beat around the bush. You've, you're you're going to hear about these two. Um, definitely. The 140 point joker over the 30, 40, 50 point joker. Now, some of you might say, why am I going to hear about the more expensive one over the cheaper one when the cheaper one is dumb and how it works? And bear with me. Here's why. First off, when you're looking at the 140 point joker, he has the ability to use poison when he does damage to characters of lower point value is penetrating and at 140 points there are a lot of characters that are lower points than him okay he also has the ability to use ranged combat expert and improve targeting ignores characters and uh so he can just shoot around characters so he can do a five damage uh and when the character hit when joker hits with attack hit characters are given uh up to two action tokens so if they don't have willpower, uh, you functionally have hit them for six. Yeah, and they're locked down. They they can't go anywhere. 
So remember how I was saying about like, look, check out the, you know, the, the denseness of the dials and how the dials are really short. Pretty much the Joker is one shotting the new meta because he's not balanced. He's really not balanced for where WizKids is going to have a character that can come in and be like, and yeah, that kills you, uh, is, is not a good idea. Okay, uh, he also uh, can't, the mad as a hatter trait, uh, other characters can't use precision strike when attacking the Joker. So, straight up. And he has a stop click. So he has mastermind, and if somehow you're able to get past the mastermind, and you get him all the way down to his last click, he's like, oh yeah, stop guess what, I have a 12 attack, I have precision strike, I have 4 damage, I can use range combat expert, um, so I'm doing 6 damage, and then on top of all that, if I hit you, you're going to get 2 action tokens, and if you don't have willpower, I'm doing 7 damage to you. Because that's balanced. So, yes, you're going to hear about the Joker. That Joker right there, Killing Joke version Joker. Okay, straight up, he has a Batman enemy, all that jazz. Lady Shiva and, and him are on double dates. Okay, pure and simple. And Dom, he has he has everything set up where all he needs is a decent taxi to get him around. And then you throw him next to freaking Proteus. And, you know, he just masterminds to Proteus. And Proteus is like, please, sir, may I have another? May I have another? May I have another? And, and it gets really sick real quick. You know, and, and you're just going to see him uh, with some sort of taxi, whoever that taxi is going to be, um, Proteus, Morlock, and uh, round, not round, uh, not round table, uh, Pandora's box. Like, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not making this stuff up. Like when I'm, I'm telling you, like, this is coming. This is straight coming. Okay. And it, it is, it's not fun. It, I, I mean, it's really not fun. And it's going to force you to go back to have to use Pulse Wave. And that's why I was saying, like, Jakeem Thunder, man, you, you're you going to be seeing him so hard. Because Jakeem Thunder has enough options to deal with this dumbness. I am not happy with this. Okay? You know, I don't... I, I'm, I'm trying not to be angry black man right now. Okay? So... This, this is not good. And there's no way for you to get around the fact that even if you find a magical way of getting him past his mastermind clicks up front and then he goes into, you know, his super senses, I'm still sort of stupid clicks. You, you would think like, OK, now this is my chance to get him. Or like, okay, I'm, I'm going to outwit his mastermind, and then I'm going to blast him. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to stop click. This can't be ignored, uh, and you can't counter it. And yeah, this this power can't be counter ignored. I have an uncounterable, unignorable mastermind. So you have to pulse wave me to end this. And oh yeah, I made sure I gimped your pulse wave. So yeah, I'm I'm not happy. I'm. I'm really, really not happy. And considering that you can get, like, I know in the past you had Lamp and you had Lockjaw and Lockjaw with Block Line of Fire and stuff. You can just get any number of, like, little minion craps to Block Line of Fire for Joker. And Joker's just shooting. Straight shooting them. Right? The entire time. Just shooting around and through them. Not caring about Line of Fire. And that was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's, let's, let's make the Joker able to shoot around people that's a great idea so that when he gets that mega dense taxi that's like 60 points and eight clicks deep then yeah like that that'll be a great day for hero clicks all right um let's let's go back to the other joker the other joker is again like a bazillion clicks so if you didn't have good mastermind fodder like proteus you could always fall back on this beat this joker uh, the ha 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 whom, uh, when building your force, Joker costs 10 points for each escape token you place on his card. Minimum three, maximum five. When 
the Joker heals or takes damage, remove one escape token from his car for each green or red line crossed. When there are no escape tokens on his car, KO the Joker at the end of the game, or if the Joker is KO'd, your opponent scores no points for the Joker and instead scores 10 points for each escape token that was removed. So, yay. How about that? And if you play it right, you could just keep dancing and dancing and dancing around click numbers because functionally, if you have the Joker on outwit, all he really has to do is just sit there. And if he gets hit, fine. He's not going to get one shot at across, across the line. And since he's not going to get one shot at across the line, you just find a way of healing him back up gradually. And then your opponent has to invest another click of damage into him. Now here's here's where the rub is. If you are able to find a way, and I'm just saying this in future tense, to give him Suicide Squad, and you're able to find a way to combine him with a crap ton of pogs and still be theme or whatever requirements are for that, guess what? You have the freaking undying Joker. You just do. He's also eh, he's not the primest candidate for Proteus, but eh, you know Proteus. Actually, come back. I just thought about something. You couldn't put Proteus on Bane. And I know someone will already type this in the comments. And that would explain why Prote why Bane is 105. So I'm sorry I, I jumped ahead of myself with that. I apologize. So going on. All right. So uh, pretty much people said like with the mathematics and the coolness, uh, he could take like uh, 18 clicks of damage. Now, if you combine that with a green light, I wonder how much more clicks of damage he would take, because then functionally you would be getting a toughness of some sort. So if you run like a green light and a joker, I think there would be Gotham, are they Gotham City or something? I don't know. Um, but you run a green light and you run a joker and you find a way of getting him like at least toughness. Um, and then you can just assume that half the attacks that he's taking are not penetrating. Uh, then yeah, he's probably going to take like 22 to 25 clicks of damage. Yeah. Uh, let's look at ho 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 ha ha ha. At the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6 and half the result. When you do, either heal or damage the Joker that many clicks, and he can't heal past his starting line. Yep. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> and of course. He he ha ha, the Joker can use sidestep and super senses. So, of course, he has invasion on top of that. So, you're, you're, you're going to see this guy. You're, you're going to see this Joker. You're going to see the killing joke Joker. You're, 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 you're just going to be tired of this. Um, if, it, if I wasn't committed to not cussing, I would, you, you would hear bleep fest right now of how bad this is for the game. Both of these figures are really bad for the game. This is, this is Undying 2.0. It, it really is. Uh, they are trying to make it so that you have something that lasts on the map and, you know, can keep going and going and going and is a damage sponge and that can do stuff back to you and be annoying. But I'm sorry, that's that's bad for the game. Undying is bad for the game. And you just, oh, yeah, I'm going to tie you up with the Joker. And you fail because I hit super senses. Oh, yeah, I also have this thing on him that gives him shape change. So screw you, homie. Like, no. No, no, no. Jakeem Thunder, 2017, for president. Screw Hillary, screw Trump, Jill Stein, and whoever the libertarian guy is. Jakeem Thunder for president. Who's better to lead this country than a guy with a magical gene? Gotta be smarter, s smarter than everybody else in the White House. Okay, let's look at the chases real fast, and then we're going to wrap up. All right, uh, Bizarre Wonder Woman. Nah. Uh, Bizarro Batman. Um, that can be interesting only if you have some character that does some weird things with a standard power. Uh, then you would want some insurance. But it doesn't stop our, our lovely friend, uh, Mr. Nick Fury, from just ruining your day. So good attempt, but not bad. Um, but I wonder how he's going to fit in after retirement. So he might actually be a current value, like a low current value, but a future high value. So I don't know how that's going to go down. Uh, Bizarro Joker. 
nah, man. Nah, that's 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 not going anywhere. Um, that's a nice tie-up piece, but he's he's not going anywhere. Uh, Bizarro Hot Girl. This is actually sort of scary, tricky, and deceitful. Okay, so here's here's what you do. You sidestep Hot Girl up. She uses Quake to hit somebody that's two squares out. And then she proceeds to put them on the other side of her. Not in front of her, you know, on the other side of her because they have to be adjacent to her. Okay, um, and in that process, you functionally have moved them four squares so for 50 points and to be able to move an opponent four squares forward that is really good is she going to like come in and rule the roost uh no but uh, i think she's going to have a nice place in florida when she flies south for the winter or would it be north if you're a bizarro would she fly to antarctica yeah. All right. Bizarro Aquaman, complete waste of money. Now let's talk about who really is going to cause problems. Bizarro Green Arrow. Now, remember when I told you that, you know, we we think that this is a range based meta and uh, we, we are still under that that delusion. Yeah. So uh, you're, everybody's on notice. Um, this fi- this figure is a problem. Uh, for range combat, just just pure a problem for range combat. And if you're not building a melee option into your team, you need to be building a melee option into your team. All right. So Bizarro Green Arrow has the trait "Me, the world's greatest archery target." When an adjacent friendly character would be targeted by a range combat attack, Bizarro Green Arrow becomes the target instead, even if he would be an illegal target. Hey, guess what? Uh, you want to do that single target pulse wave? Oh no, Bizarro Green Arrow is adjacent. So guess what? That would be a ranged attack. Oh, it would hit Bizarro Green Arrow instead. Bizarro Green Arrow doesn't do anything, and he has a Sloth Relic attached, and he just sits there, and he'll heal one. Oh, did you try to Pulse Wave again? Oh, man, guess what? An Imperfect Body Trait kicks in. Stop. Oh, gosh. I hit a stop click. Now I can use Toughness. Oh, but guess what? I'm just going to, you know, do nothing and heal and use that Sloth Relic. And, oh, hey, man, did you just try to hit me with a, you know, normalish attack? Or even Psychic Blast, Bizarro Green Arrow can just be like, hey, man, Bizarro Range Combat Expert. Uh, when Bizarro Green Arrow is the target of a ranged attack, <laughs> you may give Bizarro Green Arrow an action token to modify the attacker's attack value by minus two. So, functionally, he has energy shield deflection, but hey, again, if we give him Sloth Relic, he's an 18, so that helps. And if we're able to stack like another Sin on top of him, you know, some sort of energy shield deflection Sin, um, that would be great. So, functionally making him a 20, yeah, you're starting to see where I'm going. Uh, then uh, I lower your attack value by 2, so that gives us a functional difference of, uh, what, 5? Yeah, 5. Okay, uh... You know, and be like, hey, yeah, like, so we get this uh, modify attacker's attack value by minus two and his damage value by minus two. But, but hey, if you don't have psychic blast or precision strike and you're hitting me and you have a base three damage and I lower your damage output by two, then you're only doing one to me. And that's going to do absolutely bupkis to Bizarro Green Arrow. And again, he's going to have a sloth relic doing absolutely nothing and he's just going to heal. Uh, you know, so you could do that, and then you could be like, "Hey, man!" Uh, or both the combat values by minus one. So, like I said, like if you if you look at this like realistically, this dude is dumb. And I thought about selling him on eBay, and now after doing this review, I'm probably gonna keep him. Uh, so yeah, uh, this this is the us, you know, the meta being put on notice. Like, yo, man, um you're going to have to bring a melee option. Again, Jakeem Thunder, uh, 2017. Uh, may your wishes be granted and come true. Uh, real quick, going through the fast forces. Penguin, 
Um, at the beginning of the game, place a loyalty token on another friendly character's card. That character with the loyalty token modifies the attack and range values by plus one. Uh, any adjacent character can be given a free action to make a close combat attack targeting the penguin. Uh, if hit, place a loyalty token on the character's card of the attacker's choice instead of dealing damage. When the penguin is KO, remove the loyalty token from the game. Yay! Free nice little bump for attack and range, which is really great because he's 25 points. So, yay, vote for the penguin uh, as governor, not as president. Uh, Mr. Freeze, running shot, 10 attack, 3 damage. He has uh, Freeze Ray. When Mr. Freeze makes a ranged attack, hit characters are given a frozen token unless they already have one. Characters with the frozen token must remove the frozen token. Uh, instead of clearing to action tokens. Yes, sir. Please may I have another. This is broken. Watch out for this. Watch the throne. Uh, and then you have the Riddler. Uh, riddle me this. Uh, the character can use this character. Can use si uh, shape change. Riddle me that. When the Riddler is attacked, choose a number from one through six. If the chosen number appears on either die, modify the attack total by minus two. Uh, if the chosen number appears on both dice, also decrease the damage dealt to the Riddler by two. Now, here's what I got to say about this. This is really good because you can just pick, you know, five or six and, you know, or whatever they need to make it and you just figure out the math. Like, hey, you need a four to make this and I'm just going to lower your attack, um, you know, by two. But I'm going to pick, if I pick four you know, that's a good chance of, you know, me like lowering your stuff. But if I pick three, you're not going to hit me, you know, with like two threes or whatever. So like, yeah, you need to roll a four and a three. So either way you need a four to hit me. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say four. So there, there's, there's some, like, there's probably somebody smarter than me that does the number stuff that says like, Hey, this is what the pick. Um, it, you know, it's funny. We don't have the rest of the fast forces, unfortunately. So that's, that's where I'm going to end it. All right, so thank you for uh, surviving a little bit extra time with me on the second part so I don't have to do a third part. Um, let me just go over some overall thoughts. Uh, number one, what sucks to me is that a majority of the set is skewed toward the super rares and the chases. And we really haven't seen that in a long while. And it's sort of sad. Uh, number two, outsiders for your mama. Uh, that's, that's in force now. So if you're looking for any number of things to limit, you know, stat modification, uh, you're going to get it through Outsiders. The only issue is Outsiders is weak against Stealth because you need to draw a line of fire or against Elevation unless you're able to make them a nut chuck and, and turn Colossal or Giant. All right. Also, we're, we're seeing WizKids fill in these pit crew roles with these 25-point characters. Uh, part of me is like, no. And the other part of me is like, let's see how this goes, uh, because we already know these pit crew characters can easily be taken down. Um, and but unfortunately, the majority of these pit crew characters have stealth, which gives a high incentive to having anti stealth characters. If you're going to go the range route or, oh, my gosh, pack a melee person, which, again, uh, Bizarro Green Arrow, he is he's a thing. He's going to be a thing. You are going to have to be ready for him. And, and I mean, like, there's there's no way for me to get around me saying that there's there's no other way of ignoring that reality that Bizarro Green Arrow is probably the number one figure in a lot of people's wants and also the number one figure that's going to force how we play the game to start to change. Does that mean that, you know. Uh, you won't have to deal with freaking Crane and dumb dudes out the butt. No, you're still going to have to deal with Crane. But like, let's let's take Crane for example. Okay, Crane rolls up into your hood. He's like, rain shot, homie. I'm going to hit you for six damage because I'm Crane. All right. So Crane hits you for six damage, but Bizarro Green uh, Arrow is outside of that range and this is a ranged attack okay so he says hey man uh let's do this let's lower your damage value by two okay because you're going to hit because you're crane all right so we're going to lower it by two so that takes that six to a four all right then i'm going to take it with, on the chin with the end boom 
okay so I'm gonna take two clicks alright so I'm gonna click three cranes like alright whatever homie let's do this round two damage depletion modifiers five damage boom boom you know I'm gonna go in for the hit hits okay and, and bizarre green arrows like alright homie cool cool that's fine I'm gonna take this hit alright oh stop click and then that's it that is literally it okay so now that crane has invested a Justin Zephyrit plus his is his other you know attack to get Bizarro Green Arrow down to click five and then he's like yeah man um yeah I got that sloth relic homie and yeah I'm just going to chill and I'm going to heal one so if that whole entire combo goes off again stop click then stop click and now <laughs> he's colossal push so he's going to take one and he's Krang is forced to if he didn't do a melee action then he's regretting his life that he didn't and that means like he can't pulse wave that that's I mean like please understand what this means Krang cannot pulse wave he cannot use psychic blast he has to pick something else and so there's there's problems so bizarro green arrow is going to change the meta if folks are not ready for that and understanding how much pandora's box is going to be a part of that fine the issue is, is once pandora's box retires then we're in for something because then we don't have access to a sloth relic we don't have access to an easy heal but we do have cheap medics like night nurse and so does that rotate someone like her back into the meta so like for 70 points you have a really 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 strong defense against range almost blatantly disregarding stuff defense against range and I I don't know what to tell you I really don't know what to tell you, you know, other than, you know, get creative and get melee and understand how you're going to integrate melee into your teams, not just freaking I summon Nightwing in the charge flurry, like legit options. And again, Jakeem Thunder, King of the World 2017, you know, Black Lightning power. Black Lightning is, is the VP for, for, for King of the World. There we go. All right. I'd like to thank you all for listening to today's show, to today's show. Thank you for coming in for part two. And um, that, that'll that be it. That'll be it. You would have caught all the other good jazz in, in, in part one. So remember, man, and ladies, and cool cats everywhere, we all have to start over sometime.